Craftsman came out with their RP line, which is going to be the brushless runtime and performance line. This is very interesting to me because this is a full size drill that does not come with an auxiliary handle. They claim it has 330 unit watt outputs. That's actually not bad for this size drill. I'd like to see an auxiliary handle here for safety, but obviously this is gonna be meant for a DIY guy, home use guy. Very nice little drill that we've used for some time. We're gonna go over this top to bottom. Stay tuned. We've used this drill for quite some time in the shop before this review, and while using it, we've noticed that the plastic around the chuck moves quite a bit. So I wanted to put a straight rod in here and just test the run out. If you look, you can see this chuck moving up and down quite a bit, which is basically just the plastic around it. But as far as run out goes, it's actually really good. And that was one thing that surprises me. Obviously, this Craftsman is owned and made by Stanley Black & Decker. When we look at some of the DeWalt drills, they have quite a bit of lateral runout in them. The chuck here, as we said, is plastic. It does have a little bit of deformity to it. The metal up front seems to work well. The chuck has worked well for us. We have different modes here. We have a hammer mode, we have a drill mode, then we have 15 clutch settings. This clutch is a mechanical clutch, so a lot of people will like that. Two settings in this gearbox, 0 to 1900, which is a little bit slower, and 0 to 600 on low, which is pretty average, maybe just a touch fast for those two. It's gonna be great for a DIY guy, someone who's coming in. There's no auxiliary handle here, so you don't want the low too low. You want it to be able to kick out before you get into any trouble. LED light on the bottom kind of gets overshadowed here and doesn't get out as far to the point of where you're drilling, but it's still nice to have. Rubber overmold on this grip is excellent, nice to hang on to. It's a fairly fat grip in my opinion, and it's becoming very standard is what I feel as the Craftsman grip. You have four different connections here on the bottom of this RP drill, which is runtime and performance. It's obviously brushless. It's meant to give you everything that Craftsman has at this point in time. So this is their sort of top tier drill for this $99 drill. We're gonna put it through its paces, see what it'll do. If you purchase this drill in a kit, you're most likely gonna get the small two amp hour battery with it, which is going to be great for small projects. But if you're doing anything larger, it may not be up for the task. We're gonna test out some of its power with some spade bits. We have a one inch and we're gonna move up to a one and a half inch here slowly. We also have the four, six and nine amp hour batteries. Let's just do some testing and see how this runs. You could hear it slowing with the one inch spade bit. And we're not getting through the bottom of the hole. Interestingly enough, that could be just the two amp hour battery. Let's try the four. Now we caught at the bottom and that is one reason I like auxiliary handles on this, but there's a huge difference in what you can hear. We're still getting caught at the bottom, but that went all the way through. That's a big difference between a two and a four amp hour battery and why I don't always judge performance on a smaller battery. So let's move up to the six. Not much different than the four. And this is a little bit too large of a battery for a drill in my opinion, especially for one without an auxiliary handle, but let's just listen. there is a significant difference. Now I suspect we're gonna see that difference even more pronounced with this one and a quarter inch spade bit. So let's just give this a try and see if it'll even happen with a two amp hour battery. So we didn't stop at the end of the hole, but there was a significant slowdown in speed. Check it out again. So big difference to me, let's see what the four amp hour sounds like. 
major speed difference with the 4 amp hour. And we had a cutout with the 6, which is surprising. Nine just chews right through. Let's move up to the one and a half and just see what happens here. As we would suspect, this is probably just gonna get more intense on the lower amp hour batteries. Not even gonna start. And the real reason why these batteries in the higher amp hour work better is not because amp hour means power, it just means that here we have a this is a 1P battery, meaning there's five cells. There's 10 cells in here, so we can spread that load over more cells. We're keeping the voltage higher, and it just seems to work out much better. This is nearing its limit, which it should be for a drill of this size, and you're gonna have to be very careful with this without an auxiliary handle. Let's avoid that knot. So far, six amp hour got the deepest. I'm gonna guess this nine's gonna rock this out. Nope, still cut out with the nine. But that's not bad, an inch and a quarter spade bit, pretty good. We have a one inch auger bit. We are still in high here, so keep that in mind. We have not dropped down to the low range yet. Let's just see how it does with a two amp hour battery. Made it through, let's just listen to the difference with the four. Speed wise, significant difference. Go to the six. Six doesn't seem to be that huge of a jump in speed. It's definitely not the difference between the two and four. So that's a little bit interesting. Let's listen to the nine. Nine just rocks it out. Two and nine sixteenths inch bore bit. We are going to low range and this is the point where an auxiliary handle would be super, super nice. There you go, two amp hour battery went at it. Do the four. Very noticeable difference on this end. We got a chip in the bottom. Let's move up to the six. This bit is leaving chips as we go through. And let's try the nine. And again, we're seeing the biggest increase out of the nine because there's 15 cells in here. So you have three sets. That's pretty significant. And we're getting a ton of power out of this, pretty much to the point where you should have an auxiliary handle doing what we're doing. Three and five eighths inch bore bit. There's no doubt you should have an auxiliary handle with this. We are going right to the nine amp hour battery. We're gonna be careful and try to sneak in here around this knot. That is a no-go, but that is a huge, huge drill. Lots of them that we look at will do it, but very interesting to see how this one actually fared. This half-inch masonry bit's gonna be the top end for this drill, but I think it's a good test not only to see how fast it will actually drill with it, but also to listen to how loud this drill is when it is in hammer mode.
that's actually quite well for this size of a drill bit and it wasn't as loud as what I expected. Heat is something that we see in these drills quite often when we push them well beyond their specs. Now this isn't bad. Now and the reason I say that is because I had to have my hands covering the vents in order to make sure I didn't get hurt in this situation. And the battery is cool, although we did switch batteries quite often. So we're seeing a max of 119 and generally seeing just over 100 degrees here. That's not horrible considering that's where my hand was and that's where all the vents were. So I'm impressed with the amount of power it put out and the lack of heat, even though we were covering the vents while in use. When I picked up this drill, I expected a DCD996, something that was going to really just come out here and rock it out. And when I didn't see an auxiliary handle with the kit, I assumed, well, it's gonna be brought back a little bit because obviously a DCD996 in the DeWalt version without an auxiliary handle would be super dangerous. So using this, it actually exceeded what I thought it would do, but those expectations lowered when the auxiliary handle was not in the kit. Great DIY drill. In my opinion, I think this is gonna be something for a homeowner who's gonna be able to grab onto it, do whatever they need to do around the house, do what they need to do around cars, anything like that. Power that it has is really great. Be careful if you're using this in a situation where you have a larger drill bit and you don't have an auxiliary handle. I think that a lot of the DIY drills miss that point. They don't want to put that auxiliary handle in and it makes me wonder why. Is it because they don't want the drills used in that heavier duty situation or is it the money because they'd have to put the auxiliary handle in there or is it they think that the people who are purchasing them don't need them. But in my opinion, I'm going to throw this out there, the people that need those auxiliary handles are obviously going to be the people who are pushing the drills, but it's also great for someone who has less experience with the drill to give them another place to hang on to it so that if something happens and you get that kickback, you don't end up with a sprained wrist or something like that. So that, that can be pretty serious. And I think this drill would be amazing if it had an auxiliary handle. I would have expected it to do what it did just as well and maybe a hair more, but at that point, still a very good drill. So if you're in the market or in the Craftsman line and you're wondering if this RP, runtime and performance stuff, is worth it, it's not an expensive drill and it seemed to perform well. We're gonna continue on this RP line and just see where it kind of lands in circular saws and impact wrenches. I think that's going to be quite interesting to see if this drill was just more of the mediocre part of the RP line or if it's going to be one of the shining stars. As always, we thank you for your time. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give us a like in this video. Have a great day.